Hey everyone, in this video I will show you what my typical design process looks like using the design kit in Figma. So this is a very simple process I've been using for a long time and it allows me to easily communicate with the client, gather feedback, keep my files organized and deliver final design projects that are easy to work with for web developers. All right, let's begin. So the first step we want to take is to create a new project in Figma. So I'm going to choose a new name uh, for my project and then click create project. Now, as I mentioned in the previous video, you always want to duplicate the original design kit template and rename it to start a new project file. So I'm duplicating the file and moving it over to the new project. To rename the file, I use this formula where I use the project name and then slash working. Using the project name in the file name helps me to recognize the project when I have multiple tabs open at the same time. Okay, now I'm going to create a second empty file in my project called client preview. This is the only project file that my clients have access to during the design process. And by doing this, you can protect your working file from other people jumping in and watching you while you're designing, which could be very frustrating. Also, it can help you keep your client preview file clean and copy only pages that your client should be looking at. And in that client preview file, I usually create a new page with a date every time I send uh, another update. So we can see the progress and easily go back to the previous stage and look at the previous comments. Now I can simply copy and paste any screen from my working file into the preview file for the clients to see. And after gathering clients feedback, I go back to my working file and apply all the changes. Always remember to apply all of your changes only to your working file. This is the file where, where all of your text and color styles are connected. And if you make um, any changes in the client preview and then try to copy the entire screen back to the working file, it will lose all the color and text styles connection with your design system. Now that we have the project file structure ready, let's go back to our design process. Most of my website designs follow this uh, three-step process exploration, wireframing, and visual design. So first I start the design exploration page. And this is where I can gather all the information and notes from my research. I can simply copy and paste here any image uh, into those placeholders. I can also type in my notes. And it's also a very good idea to keep the original URLs of the source as you may often find it handy. Now, while in my research page, I usually list some competitor websites or specific design solutions. The mood board uh, is where I collect more visual, um, visual ideas, like sample design projects, fonts, colors, or even some photos that could be used for inspiration. Also, as you may notice, uh, these page templates are designed with auto layout feature. So you can easily duplicate the sections to add more images, or you can use um, arrows to move the sections around the page and reorder uh, the way you want. Finally, the style tiles templates are used to quickly present your visual design concept by combining together um, the typography, color palette, and some sample UI elements. After all of the research and inspiration, I just want to produce some fast ideas and test those concepts and show them to the client. I usually start with the detached styles, so I can pick here any colors and typography I want and quickly duplicate the template and try different options. Then you can present those options to your client and get feedback. All right, and the next step in this process is wireframing. I will cover wireframing more in detail uh, in the next video. And here, I just wanna walk you through this whole general process. So I start by creating new wireframes under the work in progress page. I use annotations, arrows, and other elements from the design kit components to leave as many nodes in my design as possible. And it really helps to better explain your design decisions and answer a lot of questions that your clients might have. Once I'm ready to collect feedback from the client, I copy the entire work and paste it to the client preview file. From here, I usually record a video where I walk through the wireframes um, and then I send it to the client along with the link to the Figma file. 
Finally, I moved the screen to the in review page. So I know these are the designs that are in the review process. And I, in the meantime, I can continue working on new screens again in the work in progress page while waiting for the client's feedback. Now, when my wireframes are done and I'm ready to move into the visual design phase of the project, I start by updating the entire design system and customizing my color styles, textiles, and UI elements. Then I copy the wireframes into mockups and start the same process as with wireframes by working on the screens, copying into the client preview, getting feedback, and applying changes back into the working file. And one important thing to mention is that once you change your color and textiles, your original wireframes will automatically change as everything is attached. So if you want to preserve your original wireframes, you can simply duplicate the entire product file and call it wireframes. Um, and then you can separate these two steps and work independently on both. But to be honest, I rarely go back to wireframes once I start the visual design process. So I never really have to split the files. Additionally, all of your original wireframes are saved in the client preview file if you ever need them. All right, and that's all I have for you in this design process video. Um, in the next video, I'll walk you through, through the wireframing process in the design kit in Figma.